So this is this is the second part of the introduction of the linear system control. So in this lecture, I'm going to talk keep talking about the the control design part. So in the previous lecture, I talked about what is the control analysis and also what is the linear system. So system control design talks about if I give a system and typically we have an objective we want to achieve and our, our goal is to design the control input uh, which can meet our objectives. So for example here, um, if I give an example here, if you drive a car for example in the lane and you want to change your, your, the lane uh, the car from one lane to another lane. So the typical control objective is to move from the current location to the desired location uh, as fast as possible, as nicely as possible. Okay. So in other words, if I would have a couple of options, one is I'm going to this way, like the the green line, green line, and the other one is black line. One, the other one is like the the orange line. So typically, the red line, as uh, the black line, is what we pre we preferred. So we don't want the car to go uh, away, e even if it still go to the next lane, that lane, but it go way up and come back. The orange line it take a little bit longer time for us to go to the next lane, while the black line is somehow desired. It go to the lane, well, probably uh, it will. Uh, it doesn't take too much time, and the blue line may take may take too sharply to the to this one, so it may not be designed in certain cases. Okay, so typically we want the design the the control input. To summarize the, the objective design the control input u sub t such that the output of system y sub t meet uh, certain criteria. Okay, generally speaking, you can see this is an abstract version of it. So. If I give T, so we want to design the use of T such that the output is more like the blue one, and uh, we don't want to have the purple line or the orange line, which is not designed. Okay. All right. So the question is, can we always design a control algorithm that can achieve desired behaviors? Okay. So in many cases, we may not be able to achieve so. So in, uh, in many cases, we might we might have multiple objectives rather than just one objective. Well, we only have one objective, it's relatively easy to achieve that one. But when we have multiple objective, it may not be able to achieve that very uh, easily. Okay, I'm gonna show you an example why it may not be able to achieve the objectives. Okay, so here I'll give you an example. Here is, let's consider uh, the control system, a linear system given by this. So here I give a, a system which is given by this G. Okay, I just use a fairly simple feedback system. Okay, I have this is KC in my control, uh, control gain case of KC, and uh, this is RT is my reference actually, and the output is my Y sub T of course. So my goal is I want my Y sub T goes to R sub T as smooth as possible, as quickly as possible, and also I want an error to be zero. There's no error tracking error basically. So goal is I want to ask was to go to R sub T fast and smoothly. So here we have the, you know the the two uh, disturbances. On we have one disturbance which is called upper disturbance. One is sensor noise. Okay, those as out of upper disturbance is coming out of from the output from system. We added the uh, output disturbance, and this is the actual output we get. And in terms of feedback, we don't get directly feedback from Y to uh, use that as my feedback. So typically, we use a sensor measurement output. So that will be the sensor noise, which is denoted by n. The output disturbance is denoted by d. Okay. So that's what we have. So let's see what's going to happen. So want to see if I would let's see want to have the control u sub t. If you can see the u sub t over here, this is our u sub t. So u sub t is already given by k c times e. So e is coming from here which is Kc times R sub t minus y sub t. Of course, there's, there's n over here, minus n over here. So you already have the u sub t. So since it already gives a form, so we want to figure out what is the Kc we should select. We want to select this Kc such that this y sub t goes to R sub t fastly and smoothly. Okay. In other words, we want the e sub t, this little e sub t, goes to zero as fastly and smoothly. Okay. So the question is, is this feasible? Okay, let's tr let's do some calculations. Okay, first we design this uh, define this et 
as r sub t minus y sub t. Okay, that's the difference between the two. You can do the opposite way, it doesn't matter. I just select as r sub t minus y sub t. You can do y sub t minus r sub t. Okay, it's the same. Okay, it's, it's okay, just put a negative sign, okay. So if e sub t is r sub t minus y sub t, so we e sub t minus y sub t as we compute over here. So first of all, compute what is y sub t. y sub t, if we compute here, y sub t is given by whatever output from here plus the disturbance, right? So this point is given by, we know we already know what is u. u, u the input, input u sub t is kc times e, which is given by this, and and I time g, you time g, you will get the uh, this the output at this point, which is not the y sub t, but is output at this point. Plus d will be the actual output y sub t. So this is y sub t is given by d plus g k c e. So k c e this is uh, k c e is u sub t input time g g is trans function which get the output at this point, not at this point. Okay. All right. So pay attention to the difference between this little e sub t and big E. Big E is given by r sub t minus y sub t plus n, as I mentioned right over here. Okay, so we, if we substitute the e by r sub t minus y sub t minus n, so this e sub t is given by rt minus d minus g kc rt minus yt minus n. So remember here, r sub t minus y sub t is e sub t, okay? So we have e sub t is equal to r sub t minus d. Okay, we do we separate these two into two terms. One is minus k g k c e t. So this is minus k c times minus n. So it becomes positive because plus g k c n over here. So we move this term e t to left hand side. So we have g k c e t plus e t is equal to r t plus minus d plus g k c n. Okay. So if I put them together, I have one plus gkc times et is rt minus d plus gkcn. So this is, is the same. So I just put them together. Okay, put this coefficient and this is one coefficient together. Get this. So if I divide both sides by one plus gkc, so I have et is rt minus d plus gkcn divided by one plus kc, gkc. Okay. So we haven't. We, so our goal is e t goes to zero, uh, fast and smoothly. Okay. So can we do that? Can we design k c to achieve the goal? Okay. So if we if we write this one e t in two different form, or three different way. I divide this because the numerator has three terms: r sub t minus d and g k c n. So I have. I divide this, uh, we, I separate this into three terms. So I, G E T is one over one plus G K C times R T minus one over one plus G K C times D. This is minus because coming from my term over here, plus G K C divided by one plus G K C N. So if we look at this one, so so this one apparently, if I look at this one, if I make a G K C and it makes this value really big, so this time will be gone and make GKC to be really big, this time is gone. Unfortunately, if you make GKC to be really big, this guy will be almost zero, because if this is really big, divide by one plus this very big number, it's almost one, which means this n will dominate, right? As a matter of fact, you can also say GX to be small, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, we couldn't make the ET to be zero, to go to zero, because these two coefficients, the sum of two coefficients, is zero. of course, you can say this, I can sort of rewrite this one as plus pi next e. Okay, so this term, this term, this two coefficient will be zero, which means you can um, cannot make the to make this one be zero. We want this coefficient to all be zero. Unfortunately, this coefficient they cannot make both uh, reach zero, right? For any for a given kc. In other words, you can also you can only make one small, but the other one will be very large because the sum is equal to one. So in other words, we cannot make the ET goes to zero for any given KC. So we cannot design a KC such that ET goes to zero. So that tells that the control design we have over here have this is called a uh, proportional control has some fundamental limitation. So in order to achieve that, we need to have a new control algorithm, and perhaps we have an optimization algorithm we can use. For example, the LQR based approach. Okay. So after you take the class, you have a concept of LQRs. So you have a goal 
you can sort of minimize that <coughs> in a certain way. Of course, it doesn't mean this ET equals zero, but you can reduce it. Okay. So the overall cross content that we'll cover in this course will include basically, as I mentioned before, is uh, the analysis part as well as the design part for the control system. And in particular, we're talking about the, the linear system, which has the property of additivity and homogeneity properties that I mentioned in the, in the previous uh, video. Okay, for linear time, well, we talk about we talk about for the for the analysis part, we talk about the the state equation represents the state equation solution for the linear time invariant system, linear time invariant system. We should talk about if I give a system somehow, this is what we call a state space representation. This is a very typical uh, uh, from uh, representation of a linear time system. We should give them x dot t a t x t plus b ut and yt the cxt plus the ut. Of course, this is linear time invariant system. If I have a linear time invariant system, all this a becomes at, b becomes bt, c becomes ct, and d becomes dt. This becomes this is for linear time invariant system, and this black one is for uh, linear time invariant system. So we are talking about what is the solution to this. Of course, I already mentioned this one. If we have a a, B, C, D to be constant, we can use the, the Laplace transform, inverse Laplace final solution, but actually there's a analytical form. You don't have to go all the calculations. If I give you A and B and C and D, you already have, you can directly write out the solution. That is what we call the state equation solution. And also talk about the stability conditions like internal stability, Lyapunov stability, and input output stability. And also we can talk about the controllability, observability. So the controllability and observability are pretty important. Controllability talks about a system that is controllable, which means that we can design control of them, such that the system reach the desired uh, goal. Um, otherwise, we may not be able to design a control, control input. Observability talks about if the state of the system can be observable. In other words, we can either directly observe the state, or we can build a state estimator or state observer to estimate the state. Okay only when the system is observable, okay? So then we talk about st the control design, we talk about the direct state feedback, which means when we ha we know the state, uh, the every state, and then we talk about state estimate and state observer. If we don't know the state, but we want to use the state, then we can use the design of state observer, or state, est state estimator, if the state system is observable. And finally, I talk about the LQR linear quadratic regulator is a type of optima, optimal control algorithm subject to a given what do we call a cost function. You can sort of consider as a metric that we want to uh, we want to optimize in terms of system performance. Okay, so that all based on the those concepts and analysis design all based on the linear system. Okay, linear including linear time invariant system, linear time invariant system. Um, there will hold a new con new nonlinear system. There will the 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 tools will be uh, very different. Okay, so some applications that I may be able to cover in the course. Uh, one example I'm I'll be covering is uh, robotics applications. So one of the one of the problem is uh, called formation control formation flying problem. So the typical problem is I give a number of uh, robots for example starting at some random locations like one two three four a number of these the goal is i want them to reach some kind of desired formation for example they maintain certain distance away from each other create a rigid formation between them and they keep moving as that that at that uh, uh, structure so um, i may be able to cover some of these uh, um, these topics in this course but probably in the a relatively simple, uh, in the simple concept level.